God bless you and welcome back to the channel Kingdom Crown Music Ministries. I am Prophet Kenneth Emanuel Thornton and the word from the Lord for you today is you have been released from prison. You have been released from prison and consider yourself today on spiritual parole, saith the Lord. And a lot of people don't really realize that it's very difficult to believe to be released from a prison that you don't know that you are in. And a lot of us, myself included, I didn't know I was in prison, spiritual prison, so to speak. See, the enemy has a very crafty way of convincing you just because you can walk from this block to that block. Or you can go to the mall and shop or you can go out to eat that you are free. And the, the truth be told, there are a lot of there are millions of people that are uh, going to beaches and vacations and uh, going out to eat and things of that nature. And they are indeed in prison. And that prison is the prison of sin and death. But God said. That he has come today to release us from that prison, from that bondage. And this particular word can be found uh, starting in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Verses 1 through 3. Romans 8, 1 through 3. And it reads. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that righteousness, in order that the righteousness requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Now, the sinful nature is what we're born with. God says that we are born in sin and we are shaped in iniquity. So because of what took place with Adam and Eve, because Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed God in the garden, sin came into the world and all of the people born after that were born into sin. Okay? And don't ever get it confused. Disobedience is a sin. That's one of the major sins. Disobedience. But God needed a redeemer. He needed someone to, to, to reverse the curse. And so he set the law, which is the Ten Commandments, he set the law in place through Moses as Mo, with Moses as the mediator to bring consciousness to us, to bring consciousness of sin to man. Because before that, man had no consciousness of sin. He didn't know he was sinning. So how was a just God going to penalize you for sin that you don't know you're committing? So he set the Ten Commandments in place so that we would realize that we were indeed sinners. And then he purposed to bring about a savior to redeem us from the sins. And let me show you something real quick. And this is, this is all the Holy Spirit because I had no intentions of going here. But walk with me to Genesis, the book of Genesis. In the beginning, chapter 3 and 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Genesis chapter three, verse 14. Let's start with verse 14. And this is after Adam and Eve sinned against God by disobeying God and eating of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Genesis 3, 14 reads, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed you are above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head. And you will strike his heel. Now that particular verse right there in Genesis 3, 15. Where God says that he will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and hers. The woman that he is speaking about right there is the church. His bride, the bride of Christ. And your offspring and hers, the offspring of the church that he's speaking about right there is Christ. And then in the next sentence, when it says he will crush your head and you will strike his heel, he will crush your head. The he he is speaking to of right there is Christ. Will crush the head of Satan and you will strike his heel. Now, right there, right after the fall, God had already, and that's proof, he had already begun planning the redemption. And that is the first, the very first prophetic word mentioned in the Bible about the coming of Christ. The very first prophetic word about the coming of Christ. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That is saying when Christ died on the cross to redeem our sins, he crushed the head of Satan. As soon as he said it is finished, he crushed the head of Satan. And we were right then and there set free from the sin, from the law of sin and death. Right there, we were set free. And we were already, but he had already prophesied that Christ would come and that he would crush the head of Satan. In, in uh, Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Right after they had made the mistake of obeying Satan. He cursed uh, Adam to work from the sweat of his brow. He cursed Eve with labor pains. He cursed the devil and the serpent with crawling on his belly long days, all the days of his life. But right after that, he gave us the clue that Christ, he had already had a redeemer in mind. See how God works? Before you even know you're going to sin, God already know or already knew you were going to sin. And he had already provided redemption for you for that sin. So there is no condemnation. Stop allowing the devil to get into your mind and, and, and uh, condemn you because of the sins and the mistakes that you make. God is aware of the sins and the mistakes that all of us will make. That we have all made that we will continue to make in the future. But that is not a legal license to sin. Do not abuse grace, said the Lord. Because grace abuse will bring punishment. Grace is in place as a uh, cushion, as a uh, safety net. But the Bible tells us clearly that we all are to attempt to bring our bodies into subjection, into the into line 
um, lined up with Christ. To have self-control. To be the type that uh, we don't lend ourselves to sin. We don't practice sin. Because anything you practice, you're going to become good at. That's just a fact. And there are many people out there that are, that are practicing sin and they become good at it. And the Lord is not pleased. Go with me right now to the book of Galatians. Chapter three. Galatians chapter three. Verse 19 through 25. Galatians three. Verse 19 through 25. And it reads, what then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of the transgressions until the seed, who is Christ, to whom the promise referred had come. So God placed the Ten Commandments, the law in place until Christ came. But he prophesied of Christ's coming Years before Moses came on the scene. The law was put into effect through angels by a mediator who was Moses. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if the law had been given that would impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. Verse 22, but the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner to sin. So that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. You was a prisoner. I was a prisoner, man. We was prisoners. Verse 24, so the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ. The Ten Commandments was put in charge to lead you to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, now that Christ has died and rose again on the third day, so to speak, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. We are free. We are free. And let me say this very clearly. We are free, but we still have to choose to take part in the life of the spirit and eternal life. That's a choice. Everybody has been given a get out of jail free card. And accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior is your get out of jail free card. The sad part is that not everyone, number one, realizes it because the enemy uses deception to keep you ignorant. And those that do realize it, not everyone uses it. Not everyone partakes in it. They love the world and the, the, the turning up and the all the sin. They love that more than they, they love eternal life. They want that more than they want Christ. And those who eat the fruit thereof shall receive. And that's the word. But we have to be realizing every moment of the day that and be conscious that we have no condemnation. We are free from the law of sin and death. If we want to be. God is not going to force himself on anyone. If we want to be free, that freedom is there. Turn with me back to the book of Romans. 
chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. See what God is going to show us here. Romans 3, 19 and 20. And it reads. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world be accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. You can't become righteous by just observing the law. The law wasn't there. Okay, let me let me obey this and thou shalt not kill and thou shalt you, that's not going to bring you righteousness. You still a you still a, a prisoner. You're still a prisoner. But God is using the law to show us the way to Christ. We want to become righteous. We have to accept Christ. The law was sent again to make us conscious of the sin. And that Christ could set us free from the law of sin and death. Look at Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 through 17. And this is going to give us a real clear picture of our freedom. But you can't be free if you don't know you're, you're locked up. You can't be free if you don't realize that you are a prisoner. And that is Satan, one of Satan's main tactics. He understands that if he can keep you high, if he can keep you drunk, if he can keep you perked out, if he can keep you mollied up, if he can keep you uh, on, on all type of uh, drugs and alcohol, weed and, and, and high as a kite, he can keep you from understanding your freedom. He can keep you from understanding your rights. And you can't defend rights that you don't know you have. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 through 17. And it reads, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. That's just the first part. Let's stop right there. If you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. According to your flesh, when your flesh is running the show, you're on a one-way uh, ticket to hell. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. But you have to do that by the spirit. See, it's not me. It's not me who keeps me from sinning. I can't. I have no power over that. The flesh is too strong. Okay? The flesh wants to sin. It needs to sin. Because it has, when since Adam and Eve did what they did in the garden, the flesh became indoctrinated with sin. But God used Christ to come through the spirit to overcome the flesh and sin and death. So the only way that you can uh, stop sinning is allowing God's spirit to come within you and override the flesh. Verse 14, because those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. That's clear. 
Those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Everybody talking about I'm God's child, I'm God's son, we are all God's people. Not so. That's the scripture. Not so. The Bible says those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. If you ain't led by God's spirit, you ain't God's child. You a bastard child. God don't know you. Sounds harsh, but it's true. And this is the word. Verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again, that makes you a prisoner again to fear. But you received the spirit of sonship. You received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. We ain't going through this for nothing. The hardships you may have, the difficulties you may have. With keeping your flesh under check, with the attacks of the enemy, with the attacks of his, his children on you and your families. We are not in this alone. Because if you suffer with Christ, then you're going to reign with him. If you're not willing to suffer with him, don't think about reigning with him. There, there's not going to be any blessing for you. There's not going to be any reward for you. There's not going to be any redemption for you. If you choose your flesh and the world. But when you choose Christ and you're willing to go through the difficult times, you're willing to press through the uh, hardships and, and endure uh, warfare like a good soldier. Endure spiritual warfare like a good soldier, then we can partake in his glory as well. We can partake in his kingdom as well. But a lot of times we are uh, uh, a lot of people, not we, a lot of people. They want the blessings of God, but they don't they don't want the sufferings of God. They want to reign with Christ, but they don't want to suffer with Christ. They want the money, the cars, the houses, the clothes, the prestige, the jewelry, the materialism. But they don't want to go through the hardships. They don't want to endure hardship like a good soldier. And I don't know about you, but I don't want any soldiers in my army that ain't willing to just be in the trenches with me. If you ain't willing to be in the trenches with me and you got my back and I'm, I'm ducking these bullets and you ducking them too on my behalf, I don't want you in my army. I don't want you anywhere near me. Tell you the truth. Because those that love you, bro, they're going to go through the hard times with you. Those that love you, they're going to endure the suffering with you. And those are the ones that you need to allow when God allows that plane to take off and, and you're flying into your blessings. Those are the ones that you need to allow on the plane. And that's why God will take you down. He'll take you to the valley. He'll take you to the bottom of life. And he'll have you do a 360 with a notepad in your hand. And when you're at your worst, you do a 360 and you will see all of the people that were around you that left, that said they loved you. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, niece, and nephew ain't nowhere to be found. But when you are at the bottom of life, that is when you take note of who's there. And when God brings you back to the top, you don't let nobody on that plane whose name is not written on that notepad. 
If they didn't want to suffer with you, you don't let them reign with you. If they didn't want to support you when you were down, you don't allow them to support you when you're up. If they didn't want to uh, go to war for you when, when everybody was throwing stones and talking about you like a dog and, and running your name in the ground, you don't allow them to uh, be in your circle, anywhere near your circle, when that G700 or G Day, that Gulf Stream takes off. Or that Bombardier, for all my uh, jet lovers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Gulfstream and Bombardier, those are two of the most prominent private jet makers. But it doesn't matter what airline you're flying with, okay? Don't let them on that plane if they were not willing to suffer with you. If they were not willing to go through the hard times with you. If they were not willing to be partakers while you were in prison. And so that we know that we're free. And Christ has indeed set us free. From the law of sin and death. And we have indeed been released from prison. And we have to act like it. We can't still be walking around like we're slaves. We can't still be walking around like we, we don't know that we are kings and queens in Christ, that we are joint heirs and co-heirs with God in Christ. So those things that God can do, you can do. Those things that Christ can do, you can do. Those things that they call uh, 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 to the forefront that were not, but they called them as though they were, you can do. But we have to realize that we're free. And we have to realize that we were once in chains in order to get free. Because Christ has unlocked the gates. He's already unlocked the gates. But millions of people are unaware of it. And millions more are aware of it. But they don't want to come in. They only want the materialism of it, of Christ. They don't want to rule and reign with him in the spirit. So allow God to bless you fully and allow him to set you free completely. God bless you on today. I pray this message found you in health, wealth, and wisdom. This is Prophet Kenneth Emanuel Thornton once again. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time God inspires me to drop one of these powerful words and teachings. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Until next time. God bless.